Swami. Srila Rupa Goswami, the younger brother of Sanatan Goswami, went to Prayag, the modern city of Allahabad, with his younger brother, Balaba. When the two brothers heard that Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was staying there, they both became very much pleased and went to see the Lord. At that time, the Lord was on his way to visit the temple of Bindu Madhava. On the way to the temple, the Lord was chanting and dancing, and thousands of people were following him. Some were crying and some were laughing. Some were dancing and some were singing, and some were falling on the ground, offering obeisances to the Lord. And all of them were roaring the holy name, Krishna, Krishna. It is said that in spite of being at the confluence of the rivers Ganges and Jamuna, Prayag was never flooded until the appearance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, at which time the city was over flooded by love of Krishna. So just to give you an idea, sometimes we see, you know, Srila Prabhupada walking through the airport and hundreds of devotees and everybody at the airport, they don't know what's going on. We actually just heard a story where Prabhupada uh, had he wanted the other devotees to bring his bag for him and, uh, you know, to take him. And he just went ahead and they were getting his bag. But on the form, it checked, he checked out, he has one bag. So when he's trying to go through, they say, you have to have your bag. And he said, well, other people are getting the bag. So the devotees started to, at least his servant, they started kind of getting a heated discussion with the with this uh, person at the counter that wouldn't let them through because he didn't have his bag. And uh, and of course, this was before 9-11, so there's like, it was before anybody had any idea of bombs and bags, because that would be a different story. But uh, and so the devotee was arguing, and then finally a policeman comes over, and says, what's going on? And they try to explain it to the policeman, and the policeman said, oh, oh, is all that, that, no that noise out there because of him? You know, <laughs> and they said, yes. And he said, if you want to, if he goes through, it'll stop. They said, just let him through. And then they let him through. <laughs> but there was hundreds of devotees, you know, chanting in the airport and it just stopped everything. And this is Srila Prabhupada, who is just really a Jiva soul, little tiny fragmental part and parcel of Krishna, but fully surrendered. Lord Chaitanya is the Supreme Lord. So we had thousands of people following, dancing, chanting, falling all over the place in such ecstasy. And we had a little sample of that, you know, with Srila Prabhupada. Even the crying part, you know, yeah, oftentimes crying. the devotees, yeah, devotees. come in Prabhupada's presence and it's uncontrollable tears. Even that one devotee, she was saying she was in the airport and this is gonna be the first time she sees Prabhupada and everyone's paying up um, and it's really crowded and she's in the back and someone bumps her and she turns around and there's these two businessmen, you know, in their suits, young businessmen there. and um, then Prabhupada comes in and she pays obeisances. And when she gets up, she has these tears just pouring from her eyes. And she looks, she looks behind her. And the businessmen too, they're crying like anything. So everybody gets caught up in this, this atmosphere. It's just overwhelming. The ecstasy is uncontrollable and the purification, whatever it is. So Rupa and uh, Balaba we're we're seeing this, we're watching, this. And watching all this from a from a distance. And they comment that uh, Allahabad, it's at the confluence of the uh, Ganges and the uh, Jamuna, and it's never flooded over until now. They see this is a kind of flood, you know, flood of love of God. Did you read that? Or did I, I, just, I read it. Okay. The two brothers, Rupa Goswami and Balaba, stayed aloof in an uncrowded place and witnessed the great crowd and wonderful scene. When the Lord danced, he raised his arms and shouted, Haribo, Haribo. The people all about him were astonished to see his activities. Indeed, the wonderful scene is difficult to describe. After visiting the temple, the Lord accepted prasadam, food offered to the deity at the house of a decanist, Southern Brahmana, with whom he was acquainted. While sitting alone at the Brahmana's home, 
the Lord was visited by Rupa Goswami and Vallabha. From a distance, the two brothers fell down on the ground to offer obeisances, and they chanted many Sanskrit verses from the scriptures. When the Lord saw Rupa Goswami offering obeisances before him, he became very much pleased and said, my dear Rupa, please get up. The Lord then informed Rupa Goswami of the causeless mercy of Krishna upon him, for Krishna had just delivered him from the materialistic way of life, which is based simply on pounds, shillings, and pence. This Rupa Goswami was employed under the uh, Nawab Hussein Shah, and him and Sanatan Goswami. And Rupa Goswami had amassed a great wealth, you know, working in this, and uh, he gave it all up. He gave it all up to. Uh, go be with Lord Chaitanya. And uh, one thing I, it says here that they offered their obeisances from a distance. I remember reading somewhere that even before the deities, it's recommended one stay some distance and pay their respects. The Lord accepted the two brothers as his devotees and he cited a verse from the scriptures stating that the Lord will not accept a Brahmin who has, who has studied the four Vedas if he is not a devotee, but he will accept someone from a very low family if he is a pure devotee. Then the Lord embraced the two brothers and out of his causeless mercy, he touched their heads with his lotus feet. Blessed in this way, the brothers offered prayers to the Lord in their own words. The prayers indicated that Lord Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was Krishna himself that he had assumed a fair complexion form, Karanga, and that he was the most munificent incarnation of Krishna because he was distributing love of Krishna. So everyone must know this verse. Can someone say? Krishna Vaimun Prasha Krishna. Very good. We say this prayer when we're offering uh, boga. This is the prayer we offer that Rupa Goswami composed about Lord Chaitanya. Namo Mahavadanyaya. Yes. Namo Mahavadanyaya Krishna Prema Pradayati Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namni Gaurat Vishinamha. Srila Rupa Goswami also recited a verse later found in the book Govinda Lila Mrita 1 2. Yo. Okay, let's see here. Yogyana matam bhuvanam dayalur. Sorry. Ulaghayam apya korot ramatam swaprema sampatsu dayat bhuteham. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mamum Prapadye. Let me surrender unto the lotus feet of Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who is the greatest, most merciful personality of Godhead. He delivers those who are merged in ignorance and offers them the highest gift, love of Krishna, and thus makes them mad after Krishna consciousness. Yeah, oh, oh, back here, he, he said he was liberated. He's liberated because he gave up everything for, for Krishna, for Lord Chaitanya. So that's liberation. I think it gets more into liberation a little bit more in the book. But Chil Prabhupada has said that liberation means just understanding that, uh, you know, just acting upon this process of Krishna consciousness. I'm not this body, I'm a spirit soul, and engaging this body in Krishna's service. And because Prabhupada says you, you're already liberated. So, and we're not like pure devotees, but we're still liberated. <laughs> so after this incident, Balabha Bhatta invited the Lord to go to the other side of the Ganges, and the Lord went. On this trip, Rupa Goswami accompanied the Lord, and indeed, wherever the Lord went, Rupa Goswami would follow him and stay with him, because the Lord felt in inconvenience in the crowded places, he asked Rupa Goswami to accompany him to a place on the banks of the Ganges, known as Dasa Vameda Ghat. Dasa Vameda Ghat. 
For 10 days, he instructed Rupa Goswami about the truth of Krishna, the principles of devotional service, and the transcendental mellows, relationships with Krishna. All of this was described in full detail so that in the future, Rupa Goswami could distribute the science of Krishna in his Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. So he taught him for 10 days on this Dasas, Dasa Svameda Ghat on the, on, the, on the shore of the Ganges. Uh, and he taught him these three things for 10 days. The truth of Krishna, the principles of devotional service, and the transcendental mellow, so different relationships one has with Krishna. Now, he's doing this not even so much as for Rupa Goswami, because Rupa Goswami is a liberated soul. You know, just like Krishna spoke to Arjun, not for just Arjun's benefit. Arjun was already a personal friend of Krishna's, but for the benefit of people in the future. So he explained all this so that Rupa Goswami can write these, these principles about devotional service, the relationships with, with Krishna, uh, the truth about Krishna. So this is uh, why he was instructing him for 10 days so that he can tell others. So Srila Prabhupada has also instructed us. He has said many times, you know, everything that you need to know is in my books. We just read his books. That's all we need to know. We don't even have to read any other books, just his book. He even said at one time, all you need is the Bhagavad Gita. That'd be the only book. You know, so we can get everything from Prabhupada's books that we need to know. And here, Rupa Goswami was given all this information so that he can write a book explaining it for us now. And Srila Prabhupada, he wrote a summary study of it. He didn't write it verse by verse like he did with the Bhagavad Gita. But that summary study is the Nectar of Devotion, and it's a very, very, very wonderful book. And it gives so much information about different rasas and leelas and pastimes, intimate things between Radha and Krishna that I don't know where we would get these if we didn't have the Nectar of Devotion. In one place, it's called a handbook. Krishna consciousness. Handbook, like the Boy Scouts have a handbook. So that's our handbook. The Boy Scouts have a handbook in the forest, what to look for, this and that, you know, poison ivy, you know, how to make a fire, you know, how to survive. So this is how to survive this material world and go back home, back to Godhead. So it's a part two of the Boy Scouts one. <laughs> And also, also those who aren't so fond of crowds, it seems it's okay because here, even Lord Chaitanya, he felt inconvenienced uh, by uh, yeah. in crowded places. That's hard to so understand. Yeah. He's always had so many crowds. He goes to the Rati Yatra and uh, you know, he doesn't like crowds. And, and Jagannath Puri with millions of people. But he feels better without the crowd. For the purpose, I suppose. Yeah. He could be. The Supreme Lord is cognizant and all-powerful, and by his causes mercy, he empowers a living entity to receive his mercy. So this is nice. The Lord is cognizant. He knows everything. He's all-powerful, and by his mercy, because it also said not just because he's all-powerful and his mercy, but he's cognizant, so he knows who that he can empower. He's, he's, his causes mercy empowers a living entity to receive his mercy. So we have to be empowered to even receive his mercy. So people in general being under the spell of conditioned life are adverse to rendering devotional service and practicing Krishna consciousness. So in general, everybody is like that. You know, there's only a few small handful of people who are actually interested in engaging in devotional service. Most people just want to enjoy sense gratification. And even Krishna consciousness, a lot of people are attracted to Krishna consciousness because it satisfies them. But if they get, if they continue with that attraction, like 
chanting, if they like the chanting, then they will get purified. Or even prashadam, Prabhupada said, we're eating our way back to Godhead. You know, people get purified by just eating. So, okay, I'm going to go back. He empowers a living entity to receive his mercy. People in general being under the spell of conditioned life are averse to rendering devotional service and practicing Krishna consciousness. They are unaware of the teachings of Krishna consciousness, which reveal one's eternal relationship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the process by which, which one can re return to the spiritual world and the ultimate goal of life, which is to return home back to Godhead. So they don't know from practicing this Krishna consciousness, they're unaware of these teachings of Krishna Godhead, which reveal one's eternal relationship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. They reveal your relationship with God. Nobody even thinks about their relationship with God. Or if they do, it's as the Christians, our father. They see him as the father. He gives me what I need. But the real relationship isn't as a father. We have other uh, relationships. We're his servants, and we can serve him in different ways. We can serve him as his lover. We can please him as his. We can be his father or mother. We can serve him as uh, as a friend, or or as uh, we can serve him as a servant or a neutral relationship. So we can get to understand what that relationship is just by practicing this Krishna consciousness. Uh, the process of which one can return. Okay, eternal relation, we, and the process by which one can return to the spiritual world and the ultimate goal of life, which is to return home back to Godhead. So you can go back to the spiritual world by practicing this, but people aren't interested. So we as devotees have to try to make it interesting to them. We have to make it attractive. You know, even the prashadam, we make nice prashadam to attract them. In the beginning, a lot of people were just attracted by the food. So because these things are unknown to the conditioned soul, everybody agrees, I'm assuming, Lord Chaitanya, out of his cause, this mercy, instructed Rupa Goswami in the principles of devotional service. Later, Rupa Goswami distributed this science to the people in general. So he also sent Srila Prabhupada because everybody forgot everything except for in India, small groups, they were Krishna conscious, but he, he wanted it just not just for India, but for the whole world. So we have to try to get this part of the world Krishna conscious. You know, there were four things that uh, Lord Chaitanya told the Goswamis to um, establish, right? One was to uh, excavate the lost places of Krishna's pastimes in the Holy Dham in Vrindavan. And one is to write Bhakti Shastris to explain the principles of devotional service to people and to establish deity worship. Temples. Temples. Right? Established temples. Temples with, with deity worship. Right. Okay. Is there anything else? Well, you said it. four, so I don't know how you got four. I, I'm thinking, I don't know the fourth one. I, well, I think that it. the principles, the books, the, temp, the lost places, and temples. temples. The principles are in the books. Okay. Temples, books, holy places, deity worship. But that's the temples, too. Yeah. Yeah. You can start from there. You can use your mic. Magnifying glass. In the prologue, <laughs> I, saw it. I got this vision. <laughs> In the prologue to the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu one one two, Rupa Goswami describes Lord Chaitanya as follows. Pridiyasya Pranaya Pravartito Hambaraka Rupa P. Tasya Hare Pada Kamalam Bande Chaitanya Devasya. I offer my respectful obeisances unto the lotus feet of Lord Chaitanya Dev, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, because 
he has inspired me with the desire in my heart to write something <clears throat> about devotional service. For this reason, I am writing this book on the science of devotion, known as the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. So he got that uh, empowerment through a desire in his heart. That's how the Lord he inspired him in his heart to write the Bhakti Shastri. So the Lord can work in many different ways. <clears throat> beginning, his, beginning his 10 days of continual instruction to Rupa Goswami, Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, my dear Rupa, <clears throat> the science of devotional service is just like a great ocean. I guess that's why I named it uh, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, right? Ocean. <clears throat> The science of devotional service is just like a great ocean. And so it is not possible to show you its entire length and breadth, but I shall try to explain the nature of that ocean by taking just one drop out of it. In this way, you can taste it and understand <clears throat> what that ocean of devotional service actually is. <clears throat> the Lord then explained that within this Brahmanda or universe, there are innumerable living entities who, according to their own fruit of activities, are transmigrating from one species of life to another <clears throat> and from one planet to another. In this way, <clears throat> their engagement in material existence it has continued since time immemorial. <clears throat> in actuality, these living entities are atomic parts and parcels of the Supreme Spirit. It is said in the Svetasvatara Upanishad that the length and breadth of the individual soul is one ten thousandth part of the tip of a hair. <clears throat> now that's small. <clears throat> the atomic magnitude of the living entity is confirmed in the 11th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, 111611, and in the 10th canto, 108730, Sanandana Kumara, while performing a great sacrifice, quotes the following statement by, by the personified Vedas. O oh, Supreme Truth, if the living entities were not infinitesimal sparks of the Supreme Spirit, each minute spark would be all pervading and could not be controlled by a superior power. But if the living entity is accepted as a minute part and parcel, of the Supreme Lord, one can automatically understand how he is controlled by the Supreme Power. The latter is his actual constitutional position. And if he remains in this position, he can attain full freedom. If one mistakenly considers his constitutional position equal to that of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he becomes contaminated by the doctrine of non-duality and his efforts in transcendental life are rendered <clears throat> ineffective. <clears throat> I read it again. Sorry. Mm, I to say something. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Well, we're one ten thousand the tip of the hair in size. And if we weren't, then we would be equal to God, and it's not possible. Uh, so we're little. With little fragmental parts and parcels of the whole. It's like a drop from the ocean. It, it's the same quality as the ocean, but not the same quantity. <clears throat> you can analyze the drop and know what the ocean is made of. So similarly, he, he's given him a drop of this uh, <clears throat> Krishna consciousness, and then he, you know, so that way he can explain more about this whole ocean of devotional service. Are there any questions so far? Yeah, I was thinking of doing that too. So, Nanda Gopal, you have a question? I only see two people. And I see Jai Rati's picture, and she had me fooled for a while, but she's standing <laughs> really still. <laughs> I can ask one question. Yeah. Are you going to ask today the question regarding Goswami's what were the four principles? No. No, mm -hmm. we're not going to read that here, so we won't be asking that today. 
I was remembering that from some something else we read. No, but everything else that we read, we're going to ask questions on. <laughs> no, we can't even conceive of how small that is. You know, you take the tip of your hair, you can barely see, you know, it's like a dot. And, you know, if you divide that, it's so small, you can't see it with our, our naked eyes. You know, it's, it's just so small. And it, and it illuminates this whole body and, and makes it move and you know, appear to be alive, this matter. It's just so, and that's just one, one drop of the Supreme Lord, you know, one little part and parcel. Imagine the Supreme Lord, you know, so luminous and conscious, you know, our consciousness pervades this space. His consciousness pervades everywhere. I just, I'd like to say that if anyone wants to turn on their video, don't let me stop you. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a serious question. So uh, you mentioned regarding, I think, Rupa Goswami, who gave up his wealth and surrendered yeah. to Lord, Lord, right? But in my uh, lowly consciousness or material consciousness, it's not that easy to give up something you like. You no, know, like if I say, say, the holy name, considering him Krishna himself, I cannot surrender. So how it is possible for a regular souls, jivatmas to, to surrender like that? I'm not imitating, but how we can follow in footsteps. They have you have to have a higher taste. It's meant it's the process of bhakti is meant to be natural. You don't have artificially have to give anything up, but by experiencing the higher taste naturally. You lose taste for other things. You know, that comes with the gradual development naturally. You, know, you don't have to give it up. But you you start by giving some portion or you know, engaging it in Krishna's service. And you work towards giving it all up. You give you give your money. Because they're ultimately gonna have to give it up at the end, you know, when you leave. You give your money to people who are not <laughs> attached. <laughs> They say you take one step towards Krishna, he takes 10 steps towards you. Yeah, or or yeah. sometimes there's hundreds of steps towards you. Right. But that's a fact. We can never reach Krishna by our little steps. And Prabhupada says, and Krishna's steps are big. He has big steps. I mean, you'll see what Vamana, three steps cover the whole universe. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. I didn't think about that. That's good yeah. to know. <laughs> that's just an expansion of, of Krishna. <laughs> <clears throat> I can't see you. Okay. Uh, okay, Prabhu. Can you see me now? Actually, oh, now I do, yes. Okay. Yes, Prabhu. So, I don't know, it might be a stupid question. So, you know, Bhavandab, you know, made, made his foot so big, you know. So, how come Krishna don't make his foot so big that one step would be enough to reach us? Well, we don't know. He may do that at the, at the time of death. Okay. Actually, Prabhupada says at the time of death, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu will come and help you to remember Krishna. You know, okay. You're doing life. So he, he can be there in an instance. He doesn't even have to take a step. He's already there. Right behind you. Yeah. <laughs> I cannot see. <laughs> You don't have the eyes to see. Yeah. <laughs> we, can, we can see. <laughs> I can't even see what's behind us. Thanks, Guru. Paul. But, but actually, it's only by Krishna's mercy that we're making any progress at all. And it's, you know, as you surrender unto me, I reward you accordingly. So he knows how much we're surrendering. It doesn't have to be an external thing that people see I'm doing this or making sure they notice that I'm doing this, uh, you know, stuff like that. We, we, have to, uh, we have to just in our heart really surrender. We try to chant, try to hear. Krishna knows. And as we surrender, he's helping us to make more and more progress. And making more and more progress doesn't mean we just become a great scholar and we can 
explain everything to everybody. But I mean, it could mean that we could, but in general, we all have different abilities and, and we will use those abilities in his service. And even if you don't have much abilities, you can always just remember Krishna and that's Krishna conscious. So as we surrender, we are rewarded accordingly. And we you know, this is Kali Yuga. It's a really degraded age and we're making an attempt in this age to remember Krishna. So we get some special mercy. What do, you, what do they call it? Grading? Curve? Yeah, grading on the curve, you know. <clears throat> so we're not, we're not going to probably get to that point where they had to be in other ages to go back home, back to God. But we're just depending on some special mercy. And we're getting a lot of special mercy. Every time we try, we have a choice. I remember once a devotee gave class and said, you know, it's like we think, well, oh, I'd like to surrender and get it over with. But it's not get it over with. It's the surrender is every moment to moment we have that choice to surrender to Krishna or to surrender to Maya. We have that choice from moment to moment. So the more we choose properly to surrender to Krishna, then the more we get rewarded with Krishna consciousness. So just surrender to Krishna, Omeo, and uh, don't worry about how Krishna's steps, how big they are or anything. <laughs> okay, Prabhu. <laughs> but Piyari, I mean, we don't have the taste to like want to read Krishna Katha all the time, listen to, you know, Krishna Kirtan all the time. We ju we're just not developing that taste. So what does surrender mean? Well, I don't know who you're talking about because you attend every single program no, that's not that, true. that you don't have any taste for. <laughs> well, as soon as the program is over, I said, phew, that's over with. Okay, now I can do whatever I want. <laughs> Glad that's over. Glad that's over. <laughs> Madonna knows. <laughs> yep. <laughs> even, if, right, even if we we force ourselves in the beginning, a taste will come. I remember once a devotee, I've heard this a long time ago, and a um, very new devotee that Prabhupada, <coughs> he wasn't he wasn't very happy. And Prabhupada asked him, you know, something, are you happy? You know, no, or something, he's not happy. And he said, well, why are you practicing, you know, why are you practicing this Christian conscious? Why are you doing this if you're not happy from, from doing it? He said, because I know in the future I'll be happy. And Prabhupada says, that was very, very intelligent, very intelligent. So even if we're not happy by doing it, we make ourselves do it. And we'll be happy. It's like going to school. I mean, those who've gone to college and stuff, most people don't really, I mean, I don't know about most people. I know me. I didn't enjoy going to school. I went to school. But people go to school generally because they, they want to get a certain degree. They want to graduate. They want to get a certain kind of job so that they don't have to work like an ass for, for very little money. They can have a better job. So they force themselves to do it and they do good so that they can have something in the future. So similarly, we have to make ourselves uh, do Krishna conscious things, make ourselves hear and chant about Krishna. I mean, how many people, honestly, in this group here, how many people get up in the morning and say, whoa, another day I can chant my japa, so happy. I can chant Chapa. Thank you, Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, <laughs> Hare Hare. <laughs> How many people get up like that? No, but I have to chant Chapa. It's part of my service. I promised I would do it. So I make myself do it. So eventually, you know, I will actually get a taste where I like chanting. Like, who was it? Was it Rupa Goswami? Who said that I, you know, I, I am. I, I wish I had millions of uh, tongues and millions of ears. 
because chanting with just one tongue and two ears is just not satisfying enough. It's so nice, but I want more. I want more. You know, we're not quite up to that yet. Yeah, the morning, I wish somebody would give me a couple of days a break of not getting up in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I mean, you could get up in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I wish I could actually take a nap in the afternoon. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I definitely, generally, I have to take a nap in the afternoon. Uh, and if I couldn't, uh, I generally, those who have seen me in a grouchy mood, it's because they didn't have a nap. <laughs> <laughs> That's me, Pierre, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I have a feeling that I might be a bear. I might be on a way to being a bear. <laughs> well, you might be on a bear in Krishna Loka. <laughs> I'm not sure what they do, but I'm sure they they uh, they serve Krishna somehow. <laughs> the six months that they're not sleeping. <laughs> Well, they wouldn't be sleeping in the spiritual world like that. And even if they are sleeping for six months, all they're doing is thinking of Krishna. Yeah, Krishna, exactly. Well, that's the life, huh? Six, I know, six <laughs> months to dream of Krishna. <laughs> anyway, I think we're getting a little off track. Let me yeah, read some still more. Have questions. Chris, she started the questions. <laughs> But I, I was thinking the same thing. We should see if anybody has questions. Krishna bhaktas are free from all material desires. Although, although those who are theoretically liberated by knowing that the living entity is not material may be classified among liberated souls. They still have desires. So even if you can still be classified as a liberated soul, even when you have desires, material <laughs> desires. Because just understanding that you're not this body is liberating. So their main desire is to become one with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Such persons are very much attached to performing Vedic rituals and, and, and righteous activities in order to enjoy material prosperity. Even when some of them transcend material enjoyment, they still try to enjoy in the spiritual world by merging into the Somebody's. I don't know. If that didn't sound like sounds from the spiritual world, but maybe close. Uh, their main desire is to become one with the Supreme Personality of God. It's such persons are very much attached to performing Vedic rituals and righteous activities in order to enjoy material prosperity. Even when some of them transcend material enjoyment, they still try to enjoy in the spiritual world by merging into the existence of the Supreme Lord. So merging is they want to enjoy. I mean, they want to be God. It's like how much more of enjoyment can you have than, than wanting to be God? I'm, I'm, I'm everything. I'm God. And if anybody gets upset, you're God also. We're all God, you know, and that's, that's, a, that's trying to enjoy. Whereas for a devotee, a devotee enjoys more than anyone, but his goal is not to enjoy. His goal is to give Krishna enjoyment. And just by trying to please Krishna, or it pleases his guru, then he becomes automatically pleased. But he doesn't try to please himself. I remember this, this just came to me. It's something I heard, you know, about 50 years ago, way before becoming a devotee. Some Christian was telling me about heaven and hell. That in in hell, everyone they have beautiful, you know, food, everything you want, but your arms are tied straight like this, and you have 
a, a knife and fork or something in his hand or a fork and spoon or whatever. And you can't put it into your mouth. So this is what hell is like. And then heaven, because they don't know what the spiritual world is, but they're, but heaven is when you have your arm, every, you still have your arms like this, but then you feed the other person. Here you go, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, that, I just thought of that because that's what we're trying to do. We're, we're actually enjoying, but we're not trying to enjoy. We're trying to give Krishna pleasure. And we don't even care if we suffer. The gopis didn't care. They thought if my suffering gives you pleasure, then that suffering is my greatest happiness. So that the the whereas the impersonalists, they're not trying to make anyone happy. Another example, I think it was Bhavananda with Srila Prabhupada, they're walking and there's some mud this in India and there's a muddy area. So Prabhupada might slip. So ba Bhavananda puts out his arm. And Prabhupada grabs his arm and they walk across this area and then the then the you know they get to <laughs> dry land, you might say, you know, a nice road again. And Prabhupada pushes Bhavananda's arm away. And Bhavananda was like, wow, you know. And he said, That's that's what the impersonalists do. They use the guru, they use their guru to. To, to, to get to a certain point and then they push their guru away. They don't need him anymore. So he was just given that example and I'm sure it stood out and he remembered that, you know. So whereas the, with the devotees, they always have that relationship with their guru. Even back in the spiritual world, we have that relationship and it's more with awe and, and reverence with our guru. Uh, you know, oh my God, why didn't somebody tell me what time it was? You can go Did I finish line. this? And be like, no, yeah. What was well, I? Yeah. 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 There's no awe and reverence. How can we have awe and reverence with our guru? Yeah, you have the awe and reverence to your guru. That's it. You want to? You want to not to have awe and reverence with your guru? No, I'm not saying that. But I'm just, I'm just confused. Even the awe and reverence with the guru, it's not. Even in this world. Devotees have relationships with their guru that are friendly, but they're still all in reverence. It doesn't, you don't yeah. lose, uh, what is it, familiarity. Prabhupada said familiarity sometimes breeds contempt. So some people can be familiar with their guru, but not become contemptuous. So there's still some more in reverence. So let me finish this. Like there's a hierarchy, you know, amongst the gopis, you know, uh, there's the now I remember, yeah. It yeah, it says, but it's insignificant, yeah. I'm not going to read that. It's too long. We'll just start with this paragraph. Okay. Does anyone have any questions before we ask questions? I think just, just call out the answers because we don't have much time. Okay, I'll start asking. Well, write down, write down this on here, page and, and that. Okay. Okay, some easy ones in the beginning. Some are really hard. Nobody may know the answer, but that's okay. And we don't have to get all the answers or get something close. Who is older, Srila Rupa Goswami or Srila Sanatan Goswami? Sanatan Goswami. Correct. Correct. Who is that, Devi Priya? Yes, I knew also. Well, she beat you. I'm sure everybody knew that one. Yeah, everybody knew that one. No, here's another I one. Everybody my, knew. I just put my mic up permanently on. Okay. What was Allahabad called before it was called Allahabad? Prayag. Prayag, you got you beat it this time. Okay. I went to Prayag, so I know. <laughs> I went to the Triveni okay. Sangam. Who else went to Prayag? <laughs> we all went to Prayag, so they be Prayag. We used to live close to it. No, who? No, no, not when I was children. I went as an adult. <laughs> okay, okay. Who went with Rupa Goswami to pray out? Vallabha. Right, Vallabha. right. right. Who is Balaba? His, His brother. brother. Who's brother? Rupa Goswami's <laughs> brother and Sanatan Goswami's brother. Right. And where does he fit in that chain of brothers? He's the younger brother. So yes. Only these two are answering. Okay. 
Now this is a hard one. What do what do rivers mean at Prayag? Deja ahí, está bien. No. I'm, 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 if other people want to go and I don't want to hog yeah, everything, I, I, I don't need to shut up. up. Yeah. Shoot a box, he said it. Okay. Yeah, I knew the answer. I didn't want to say it. I know. Okay, Ganges and Jamuna. I don't know who said it because everybody said it. Okay, what was the name of the God where Lord Chaitanya instructed Rupa Goswami and how many days did he instruct him? The Shastra made the God and 10 days. days. And 10 days yeah. I heard somebody <laughs> say it. I imagine a lot of you got it. Okay. And what river is the Dasa Vameda God located on? Jamuna. Well, you're close. I think it's Ganga. <laughs> Ganga. Ganga. I think Ganga. it's Ganga. <laughs> it's the Ganges. Okay, this is a hard question. So if you don't know, we'll just tell you the answer. Mahaprabhu instructed Rupa Goswami in three things. Can you name, well, let's say name one of those three things. Excavate the holy places. No. No, no, no. He did, he did tell him to do that. No, but what's the principles? Principles on devotional service and uh, about absolute truth. And the third one is uh, I don't remember third one. Very good. It's a good thing you don't, because I wouldn't believe you're getting them if you did. <laughs> <laughs> it's the truth of Krishna. Yeah. She said absolute something. Yeah, I said absolutely. The absolute. principles of devotional service. Yes, you said yes, that. I remember that, yeah. The transcendental mellows. Okay. Relationships with Krishna. Okay, this is another hard one. In what book did Rupa Goswami write about these three topics which was taught by Mahaprabhu? Nectar of Devotion. Nectar of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. Sindhu. Yes, okay. very good. In the prologue, to the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Rupa Goswami describes Lord Chaitanya as, you want to read that Sanskrit for me? Mahavada Nyaya, Krishna Prema Padayate, Krishna and Krishna, Tame Nam Nigarot Vishay Namo. No. No, it's the other one. She's reading it. Let her read it. Okay, in your own words, what is the gist of the above Sanskrit verse? I mean, I'm going to read the whole thing, but it's what it is. Does anybody know what that is? This is the, Bhakti, the prologue to the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu Rupa Goswami describes Lord Chaitanya as follows. And we read the Sanskrit, which is different than the Sanskrit that Gita Rita was saying. Anybody have any idea? Okay, I'll give you some hints. I'll read the beginning. I offer my respectful obeisances unto the lotus feet of Lord Chaitanya, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, because he has inspired me with the with the what service with the desire in my heart heart <laughs> you're, right. you're sounding like president kennedy giving a speech <laughs> Ask not what your country can do for you, but you can do for your country. <laughs> you, 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 get, you get extra points for that. <laughs> I offer my respectful obeisance to the lotus feet of Lord Chaitanya, the Supreme Personality of God, because he has inspired me with the desire to, in my heart, to write something about devotional service. Devotional service. For, for this reason, I am writing this book on the science of devotion, known as the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. Okay, complete the following statement, not exact words, but just the gist of it. Uh, beginning is 10 days of continual instruction to Rupa Goswami, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, my dear Rupa, the science of devotional service is just like a great ocean. And so it is not possible to show you its entire length and breadth. But what? I will I can describe a, a drop of it. Perfect. 
Yes, I shall try to explain the nature of, this, of that ocean by taking just one drop out of it. In this way, you can taste it and understand what the ocean of what is actually. The ocean of, the initials are DS, Devotional, devotional service. service. Yeah, very good. <laughs> Devotion of devotional service actually is. Okay, now the next question I'm going to have to this page, I'll have Jeeva mm -hmm. ask, is what is a, a Sanskrit word for universe? For the universe? Brahmanda. 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 Very good. You want to ask? <clears throat> no, hands, no, hands. no hands. She likes to give hints. Uh, what is the length and breadth of the individual soul? One hundred of a hair. Somebody got it. Probably. How does one become contaminated by the doctrine of non-duality and his efforts in transcendental life become ineffective? Okay, you can give a hint. <laughs> <laughs> by thinking he's God? <laughs> yeah. By thinking everyone is God. Yeah. And if one mistakenly considers his constitutional position yeah. a part and parcel equal to that of the Supreme Person. Oh, I actually yeah. got that one. What yeah. are the two kinds of living entities? Shara, Shara, Akshara, fallible and infallible. Yeah, pretty much. Really. Eternally liberated and eternally conditioned. Yeah, Nitya Baddha. Oh, Nitya Baddha. Nitya Siddha. Yeah, what are the two types of eternally conditioned living entities? Mm. Nitya Bata. Oh, I don't know if we read this. Did no, we read did, did we I don't know if we even read that. No, we didn't. No, we you didn't did not read it. Yeah. <coughs> but there. what were the questions I did? They covered this. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Uh, I just, I, I had a realization during these questions, and I, I, I kind of had a realization how. Gitamala got through college. <laughs> <laughs> I got through college? <laughs> huh? What does that mean? Well, you see, the guess right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, I think it's more my sister who did that through college, really. <laughs> she, she, she used to study like, you know, five questions and hope that they come in the exam. <laughs> Ah. Whereas I used to, I used to study the entire book like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> so Devi Priya Mataji, you should have shared the questions. <laughs> what questions? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you have a question? <clears throat> no, I think so. Padma Lochani was saying if you knew what the question is going to be in the exam, you should have shared the question. I oh, no, be. no, I guessed it. I guessed it. And I, guessed I was very it, good yeah. at BSing. I yeah, guessed so my way through most that's of what college. I'm telling you. She's the one who guessed all the time. Whereas but I, I, I didn't do too badly. The fact that I didn't study, I still was able to. <laughs> but Gita Malamataji. Hmm. I'm also like you, used to read whole book <laughs> the last few days <laughs> right, before right. the exam. And right. then, you know, would, trying like, to digest. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember those days. <laughs> and it's so nice to see you, Mahadana Mataji. This is Shuddha Bhakti yeah. Dasi here. Oh, thank you. For yeah, me. me too. I was elated. I loved seeing you. Oh, God, thank, Ma you Mahadana. So thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Mahadana, yeah. Krishna. Mahadana they, they won't let you see them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> if if you want to see me in my robe, I can open up. Yeah. You can see me. I can see Shuddha Bhakti. Shuddha Bhakti, how come I don't see you? Uh, okay, I because can show I'm, my invisible. I'm invisible. <laughs> you look nice. You know, I'm lying down. Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> I can I can uh, on camera myself. See, I'm lying down. Yes, this. Oh, Sudev, 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 that was. No, this is me. Yeah, I'm, I didn't I'm, see Priya Mataji. Yeah. Priya Mataji is practicing to be a bear. <laughs> <laughs> see. Mahadana, seeing you reminds me of the early days of our 
hard yeah. for people. <laughs> Long time ago, wasn't it? Yes, yeah. Yes, oh my yeah. God. We were it's only like 10 years of... now? It's like 10 years something? No, what? but see, Mahadana Mahadana oh, Mahadana has ago. one thing 30. that nobody else has done. 30. She handed a bouquet to Prabhupada. She has that personal experience of handing a bouquet and Prabhupada said thank you to her. Now, how oh, many of us can say that? Yeah. Yes, I good. cried. I cried so hard. I just, I couldn't control it. I just cried and tell cried. Us, and tell cried. the story. Tell the story. Well, I went down with Srina. We were living in Fort Lauderdale, and Prabhupada was coming to Miami Temple. And um, we got down there that evening, and there was a big crowd, and I had brought this little bouquet of flowers and I went up to Srila Prabhupada and I said I geez what did I say I said Hare Krishna Srila Prabhupada and he took the flowers and he said thank you and I I'm not sure but my hand might have touched his hand just a tiny bit but I'm not sure about that but I went Dang. back to where Srina was standing and I got down to pay my obeisances and I started crying and I, I must have cried for 10 minutes. I mean, I just cried and cried and cried. And it's the, it's the closest thing that I have ever had to a truly spiritual, enlightened experience in my life. It, 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 just, it just proved everything to me that 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 there is pure um what am i trying to say pure uh, energy yeah yeah that that pure uh delight in krishna consciousness in in loving krishna and in the in the reciprocation that you have with the pure devotee you know is is it was just uh it, it was it was wonderful it was just such mercy such mercy it really was it's things like that that if any doubts come in your mind and then you think of that then you get rid of those doubts right away because that's nothing, right that's you, you right know, without a doubt this is real that's right exactly 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 yeah that's why you're still here i mean that's right i'm here in krishna consciousness i mean <laughs> not here in the material world <laughs> <laughs> well both <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's wonderful you had a taste um, it said param dusvarni vartate by experiencing a higher taste you can give up the lower taste some of us only have had to dream about it huh <laughs> yeah <laughs> Not everybody even had a dream of Prabhupada. So. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I hope Prabhupada comes in a dream. I've never had a dream of Prabhupada. You know, I wish he would. But Maybe I'm even, not. There's even disciples of Prabhupada who never saw him. I read from one uh, devotee. She never saw Prabhupada, but she, just by reading his books and associating with the devotees, she has felt his presence. You know, he, he lives uh, forever in his books and she's, I don't know, she's still fired up. Well, uh, so I, I can tell that Srila Prabhupada is still instructing us, us when he sometimes comes in a dream and instructs, you know. But I don't get a dream, um, that's what I'm saying. Not everybody will. I mean, he, can't, he lives forever in his books. You read his books, you're having his personal darshan. Yeah, that's you, more. You, can watch, you can watch the videos, Prabhupada's lectures, devotees talking about Prabhupada. You know, it, he's not limited by time and space. That's a spiritual relationship. Yeah. Devani. Yeah. But those who do get that uh, Bapu, mm -hmm. it, it's, it is very it's special. special. Too. It is so special. It's not it, it is like uh, out of this world. It's exactly what it is. And what and like what Mahadana said, it reaffirms what you read. You know, you get that practical experience of what you yeah. read. 
Prabhupada's books. Yeah. Keep going, wanting more. more That's of right. That's right. But even if you didn't have any experience with Prabhupada personally, if you, you know, he, he can come when you're actually leaving this body and then you'll just be enamored by him and go back home back to God. That's what we told Radha when she was leaving her body. We told her to look for Srila Prabhupada and he would take her back to Krishna. I'm sure he did. Yeah. yeah, he did. Yeah, she was very special. Yeah, yeah. I remember she went the, the last time I saw her, she went around with a flower where that nursing oil that she went and gave it to all the devotees, and she was walking around. That's the last time I saw her, right? Right, she wanted to go on Sankirtan with me. She asked me to go out and distribute books with me. She was so special, and here's this little girl. Yeah. And at night she wanted, she stayed here with me one night. I don't know if you remember, but she wanted to sing the samsara prayers before we went to sleep. Oh, how nice. Yeah, she's really special. And for those who have been to our old temple and seen the curtains open and close, she purchased the curtain rod. Oh, really? <laughs> she wants to purchase it. She used her own money. And even yeah. when she couldn't eat uh, Mahadana, she used to ask for one grain of rice. She knew the value of prasadam, you know. Oh, joy. joy. And like what my husband was saying about Lord Chaitanya coming to you, she was doing a collage and uh, she found a picture of Lord Chaitanya, right? She was in the hospital and they're making these collages. And of all these pictures, you know, Lord Chaitanya comes to her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In other words, the hospital. She was at the hospital. Yeah. There was the Carmi Hospital, and they gave her all the things for making a collage. But somehow, a picture of Lord Chaitanya was in those things. Right. They had it was down at Sloan Kettering. Sloan Kettering. Yeah. And she, and they had a couple of BTGs, and she made this big collage with Srila Prabhupada and Lord Chaitanya, and all these beautiful pictures of Krishna and Prabhupada and. It was so nice. She was such a sweet little devotee. And you said yeah. she kept a book with the Maha Mantra? Yes. She wrote the Maha Mantra in? Right. When she couldn't talk anymore, she wrote it. Yeah. She wrote it out in different colors for each mantra. It was a different color. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I still remember have that. When she was laying down, she couldn't talk. And we were having a kirtan, and, and I was leading. And Srinath, who's a father, uh, everyone responded a certain way. He responded differently. And she started like laughing, but she couldn't say it. She's just smiling because <laughs> she could see he's, he's chanting it differently than everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. That was funny. He was very perceptive. Even that, you know, on a, uh, on a deathbed, she was very perceptive. You could tell she was very special and she just came to burn up that little bit of karma and go right, back. Right. And, and, and Mahadana, I told you that I had a dream that uh, Radha Kund came to get Nitai. I told you that, right? Or is it? Say that, say that again. I had a dream that Radha Kund came to get Nitai. You did? I did. I, 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 I might have mentioned to you, but you may not, it may not have registered. But soon after Nitai left, I had a very strong dream that Radha, very, very soon after that, that Radha Kun came to get Nitai. Wow. That's so nice. It was so, it was so clear. I mean, it was like such a, you know, vivid wow. dream. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. That's so nice. Yeah, I mean, Nitai had been to Vrindavan, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you know, I, I worry so much about... No, you have nothing to worry. Radha Kun came. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I have, like, these very premonition kind of dreams, you know, I do. Oh, wow. That's so nice. Oh. To, thank you so much. And he chanted Hare Krishna, he took prasadam and yeah. everyone prayed. And his him. art was beautiful. I had I had one, but it disappeared. I think my ex stole it from my house. I looked, I should have kept it immediately. A full article was there because the 
HMO law in Connecticut changed because of him. That whole law yes. was written. And that magazine, because my ex used to work in Danbury Hospital, you know, he would moonlight there. And I think that magazine came from there. And beautiful art. I wanted to give it to you, but then that thing disappeared. I think he took it with him. Oh. So I couldn't find it. And I felt so disappointed, you know, but it was beautiful art. He was, I know he was an artist. And a yeah. full article about you, Srinath, everything, your whole family, and how the HMO law changed. Everything was there in that article. And yeah. beautiful pictures that he drew. That whole oh, thing wow. was there in that magazine of Danbury Hospital. Wow. I would have loved to have seen that. I know. I would have. I wanted to give it to you. And I, I even told her. And then when I looked, it had gone. Because those days, he would just come in and out and go. I should yeah. have changed the locks, but I did not. But he had free access to the house. And it went with him. I know that. Yeah. So, but I should have taken it and kept it somewhere, and I would have, I would have loved to give it to you. And whole, I wish it is maybe Danbury Hospital. If you look in the archives, it might be there, but I don't know which, which year and which section. I wouldn't know how to, how to research that. Right, right. Maybe yeah. the maybe maybe Jairade would know okay. as a librarian. Yeah, I'm just saying. Jairade probably would know how. Yeah. Would you know how to look into the archives <laughs> of a previous magazine? She's not there anymore. She could find it, I'm sure. She's so good. Definitely the stuff. information, the dates. If you know the I year. don't know the dates. That's the thing. Oh, Ma I do. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, he yeah. left in 1995. Okay, so oh. if you research 1995 and 96, you know, because obviously the, the article came afterwards, after the launch. What was the magazine? What magazine? It's Danbury Hospital. It's a hospital magazine, like the hospital puts out something. Oh, okay. Okay. So it's from Dan. I remember Danbury Hospital. I remember the thing. It's like, a, I don't know. I mean, I can see it. I, and something else is there, some stupid one. I'd kept it away. And it was in a drawer. And I didn't think he would get into the drawer, but it disappeared. Okay. So, but okay, I wish we, I have to, we have to end because we're supposed to end. Okay, by oh, sorry, sorry. 21. Okay, it's, uh, anyway, that's all for our respectful basis and all the Vaishnava devotees, Lord Vancha, Kalpa, Mahadana Mataji ki jai. Ki jai. Thank you. Jai. So glad to see you. Thank you so much. Hari Bo. Hari Bo. Hari Krishna. We have a Kirtan um, from Tithraj Prabhu. He is joining us from Danbury. Um, he will be doing a Kirtan for like approximately 30 minutes so if you would like to stay on yeah please thank you so much Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Bol Hare Bol Prabhuji so happy to see you thank you so much Hare Krishna so uh, Prabhu Hare Bol Hare Bol Prabhuji Prabhu uh, I'm trying to do today the, tonight the Kirtan with uh, I don't know if it's possible to do with ukulele yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. Yes, Prabhuji. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us, Prabhuji. We'll Thank say three you. times Hari Bol to Prabhuji for joining us. Hari Bol. Hari Bol. Hari Bol. Hari Bol. Hari Bol. Kali Kali Nama Swarupa Krishna Avatar. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama 
Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare.
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna. Krishna, 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 Hare Hare. 
श्री गुरु परंपरा की वाओ दैट वाज वंडरफुल आल्टर प्रभु जी थैंक यू थैंक यू या दिस इज श्रील प्रभु पाद की अयेंद्र प्रभु की जय 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 हरि हरि बोल हरे कृष्ण प्रभु जी दिस इज योर होम राइट यस यस प्रभु यस ऑसम ऑसम प्रभु जी टू मेंटेनिंग वंडरफुल आल्टर Prabhu, we we would love to have you very often. <laughs> We're so feeling very very blissful, very happy. Sudhu Bhakti Mata Ji sent a message to you that uh, she is feeling very happy seeing you. Thank you. Same same for me, Prabhu. Thank you. I uh, I love the association with the devotees. You know that's wonderful. Make me feel so happy. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful. Very very happy to see you. And um, thank you for the wonderful kirtan. It was. I I couldn't go anywhere. I was actually working, but I just sat when you started the kirtan, and then I just started listening. <laughs> Wonderful, Prabhu Ji. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. All the devotees. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhu Ji. Thank you so much. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Thank you. 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 I used Hare to play pudanga. Yeah, was, who was speaking Spanish? You? Yeah, see me, me. You have learned Spanish a little bit. Ah, Hari Bol. <laughs> Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Yeah, we have to get together sometime. To yes, play. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Yes, yes, Prabhu. Definitely, Prabhu. Oh, Ratra Yatra is coming in, in New York. Die, die. Lord Jagannath wants to appear. You know? Yeah, you, yeah. Jagannath. Who can say not? Nah? You know, who can say not? Nah? <laughs> if if the if if Lord Jagannath wants to appear, nobody can say not. Nah, you know, see, see. even nothing, nothing can. You know, as mercy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Gracias, gracias, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Gracias, Hare Krishna, Hare Bol, Hare Krishna. Hare Bol, Hare Krishna, Prabhu Ji. Beautiful <laughs> chanting, Tithraj Prabhu, Hare Krishna. And glad to know that uh, Nandgopal Prabhu can speak Spanish. So good. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Hari Krishna devotees, thank you so much for joining. Hari Hari Bol. Hari Hari Bol. Thank you, Dev Prabhu, Manishi Mantaji. We would like to hear more from Tithi Raj Prabhu again. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, thank you. we love the we love the instrument and very very pure, nice chanting. It's soulful. Yep, yep. Thank you, Prabhu Ji. Thank you, Hari Bol Prabhu. Hari Bol. Hari Bol. जो प्रभात की जाए जाए